Please take our seats. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, Mr. Deputy President, and Pastor Dokas, our Prime Cabinet Secretary, the Honorable Musalia Mudabadi, and Mama Tesi, the Honorable Speakers of the National Assembly and Senate, your Lordship, Chief Justice, and President of the Supreme Court, and your Deputy, the Governor of the Great City of Nairobi, your Excellencies, High Commissioners, and Ambassadors, Cabinet Secretaries, Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, na wa Kenya wenzangu wote hamjambo. Wa Kenya hamjambo. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Assalamu alaikum. Wa Kenya hoye. Asante ni sana. Mimi nimefurahi sana kwamba katika jamhuri hii ya kwanza kwa serikali ya awamu ya tano tunasherekea jamhuri kwa njia ama kwa hali tofauti Today we celebrate this jamhuri in a special way that we have intentionally profiled this Jamuhuri to be the Jamuhuri of technology and innovation. We have done so deliberately and intentionally because of the huge potential that exists in our technology and innovation space. And in our midst, our friends and partners who today are our guests and they have come to join us in this celebration leaders from the tech community and ecosystem join me ladies and gentlemen in welcoming Kojo Boake the vice president of Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp, that is the Meta community. To Apige Makofi Jameni. Also join me in welcoming Fulufelo Badugela from Multi Joyce. To Apige Makofi. And Alex Okosi from Google and YouTube. Tumpigie makofi. Na mama wetu Phyllis Migwi kutoka Microsoft. Tumpigie makofi. Na Salim Egos from Mastermind. Let us celebrate him as well. And Aida Diara from Visa. These great people. Tuapigie makofi tena wako hapa. These great people have joined us. Please, you can take your seats. These great people have joined us because Kenya is a country of great opportunity, especially in the tech space. And we deliberately chose that this Jamuhuri is going to be about innovation and is going to be about technology. And we did so deliberately for various reasons which I will elaborate. First, when we went round, the people of Kenya told us that they want technology to drive our economy. And that is why we have 
decided that we are going to have a 100,000 kilometer super highway that is going to be built to enable internet access our homes, our cities, our towns, and every part of the Republic of Kenya, because that is how we are going to be delivering government services going into the future. Let me also announce that this is a technology and innovation Jamuhuri, because we intend to transfer 85% of the remaining government services to the digital space so that every Kenyan, wherever they are, they do not have to get into any bus to go to get government services or queue in any line to access government services. It will now be possible in six months when we finish the digitization of 5,000 government services, it will be possible for Kenyans to access government services from their comfort of their homes and their workplace using the internet because government services will be available on that platform. Let me also say that we intend to deliver our subsidy program on fertilizer, on e-voucher, on e voucher that is going to be available to 1.3 million farmers. And I want to encourage our farming community to register themselves because going forward, our fertilizer subsidy program is going to be, dis is, is going to be dispensed on the internet, on e forger so that we can eliminate brokers and eliminate cartels and ensure that targeted farmers have access to fertilizer. We have also had a conversation of our lifetime and we have a target of one million jobs from our technology space. We've had a candid conversation with our technology and, te uh, and digital space leaders that Kenya, going into the future, we're going to have a million jobs and that is why it is necessary and it is important that all of us understand the importance of technology and the place of innovation going into the future. Let me also say, as we deliver our universal health coverage, our tech community is going to be the space for e-health, and therefore our universal health coverage is going to be provided on a digital uh, backbone and ensure that all health records are made portable courtesy of technology because that is the intention of our administration going into the future. And let me say that if there was any doubt in anybody's mind about the power of technology, just look at what has happened to the Hustler Fund. In a record 12 days, today, the Hustler Fund has 15.4 million subscribers. In just 12 days, the Hustler Fund has lent 7.54 billion Kenya shillings to approximately one to to the 7.4 to the 15 million Kenyans that are on that space. And let me also say that the Hustler Fund has accumulated savings of close to 400 million shillings in just 12 days. Well on track to a billion shillings in the next few days. It confirms the power of technology. Without committees, without secretariat, that is what the Hustler Fund has achieved. And the good news, and I want to thank the millions of Kenyans who have borrowed on this platform, that today 1.2 billion shillings has already been repaid by Kenyans who borrowed on this platform.
And it is clear that two things have come around because of what you have seen on the Hustler Fund. Number one, it has provided a platform for millions of Kenyans who have been looking for an opportunity to save. And number two, the Kenyans borrowing on this platform, they have not been derailed by the rhetoric of those who are against the Hustler Fund. Let me say for the record and ask fellow leaders, my good friends, you are borrowing your mortgage at 3%. You have the capacity to borrow from your bank at 14%. Why do you want to derail the hustlers who today are suffering from Shylocks and from predatory lenders and they are being charged 360% and you are telling them not to pay money given to them at 8% so that they can go back and pay at 360 percent be humane be kind please allow the people borrowing on the hustler fund to also enjoy low interest rates the way you and your families are enjoying do not derail those kenyans who have suffered for long from now accessing money on a digital platform that is of interest that is reasonable. And as we enter the sixth decade of our independence, we can proudly cite many achievements and impressive progress made through our own consistent efforts as evidence that our freedom struggle was neither an empty political adventure nor a reactionary, bo nor reactionary born of idle resentment. We gather as a nation to commune with our forefathers who were long-suffering innocent victims of imperial plunder and colonial oppression, yet also heroic defenders of our inalienable sovereignty and valiant fighters of our freedom. On Jamuhuri Day, we celebrate the moment when Kenya proclaimed itself a free democratic republic. It is also a time to reflect deeply on the founding aspirations of our nation. And I want to say, while I move along with you, that in the, in the early moments of this administration, we engaged to ensure that the challenges that millions of Kenyans told us in this campaign, we began the journey to address those challenges. One of the biggest and notorious challenge is the challenge of high cost of living. And it is imperative that we have a clear plan. And I want to tell the people of Kenya, this high cost of living, we are tackling it in three phases. Number one, our first agenda when we came into office is to ensure that we encourage farmers to access affordable fertilizer. And that is why we reduce fertilizer from 7,000 shillings to 3,500 so that we can enable our farmers to be able to enhance their productivity in our journey towards making food affordable in our republic. Our second agenda, and I have said this, is that we are going to import 10 million bags of, 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 of different assorted types of food, including maize, so that we can close the gap temporarily because of the harvest that was limited in this year's agricultural season occasioned by climate change and failure of rain. And thirdly, we are now in the process of working with the private sector to ensure that we import 300,000 metric tons of fertilizer for the planting season that is going to come from January going into April. Already, 
Two million bags have arrived in the country and four million bags are on the way. And I want to assure our farmers that we are going to stand with them to make sure that government provides adequate seed and adequate subsidized fertilizer to make sure that our productivity is enhanced so that we can produce enough food and reduce the challenges of the high cost of living in our republic. The second item that we must tackle is the issue of ensuring that we create enough jobs for the millions of young people in our nation.